Hello and welcome to the Freedom Baptist Church podcast from Freedom Baptist Church in Mineola, Texas, where we're free from the chains of sin and death. Thank you for listening and please enjoy. Especially blessed today with children. Children are a blessing to the Lord in Psalm 78. Children are what it's all about because they are our future. Save the Lord coming back. That little man right there is going to replace me one day. He's going to, he's going to be a pastor. He's going to preach. But he's got to be taught the right way. The word says, lift up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he shall not depart from it. So the charge here to the family is to raise up that child, and we want to go to Psalm 78. We're going to do the first eight verses, and then we're going to speak for a little while. The word of God is replete, starting with, 1 Samuel, when Hannah cried to the Lord, Lord, give me a child. God honored her prayer. God gave her a prayer. I love it. God gave her that child, and she brought that child back to the Lord. She brought that baby back to Eli and offered that baby to him. We're told in Luke, the second chapter, that Mary and Joseph came to the temple and gave Jesus back to God. We are told to give our children back to God. They are a loan from God. Our children are here for one reason and one reason only, to be our perfect perpetuity as humans, but to carry on the ministry of God. In Psalm 78, verse 1, Give ear, O my people, to my law, and incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable, and I will utter dark sayings, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have been told us. We will not hide them from our children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength. 
and his wonderful works that he has done. For he has established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come, that's your kids, that's your grandkids, that the generation to come might know them. Even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Verse 7, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Folks, it is our duty, it is our obligation to raise our children, our grandchildren, in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. You know, most of us spend our time in children's church. Most of us can quote you all those old little songs that we sang, but they don't mean anything to us. So I'm going to give you one today. In case y'all don't know it, <clears throat> children, babies are God's little spies. They are always watching. They watch what you do. They pick up what you do. Good or bad. Good or bad. They're watching you. We can go on to the generational curses, and we're not going to go that route right today. What we are going to talk about is being that parent that you need to be for your child. So I'm going to give you just a few short statements and ask God to, to bless it. Let's ask God for the, the reading blessing for the reading of the word. Father, I thank you that the word, the word is unchanging. Forever, O oh Lord, is thy word settled among the heavens. Dear God, you didn't ask Don Smith what he thought about it. You didn't ask what Joel Osteen thought about it. You didn't ask what Stephen Furtick thought about it. Forever, O oh Lord, is your word. Your word. I pray, Father, today, that you would let me speak your word, true and holy, and not intermingle Don Smith in it. I pray that it be for you and your glory. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit touch hearts today and show us how we should live before our children, how we should raise up the next generation. And Father, I ask that you bless the reading of your word, and Father, you promised in your word that it would not return unto you void. So we're going to call on that right now, Father, that your word is not going to return unto you void. I'm in Jesus' mighty name, Father, I pray that you use me one more time, just like you did Samson, before you take me home. In Jesus' mighty name, I ask it. Amen. <clears throat> you see the white patch on my arm? That's called old folks' skin. That means I, I bumped hair a while ago, so I'm leaking a little bit. All you young folks, you don't know nothing about it. But hold on, three more. All right. What does the word say? Train up a child in the way that he should go. Proverbs 22, verse 6 says to train up the, the child in the way she should go. We're supposed to bring up our children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. But just like I told you a while ago, the children, children, though they be a blessing from God, God will kill them. They're always watching. If you want your grand, if you want your child, if you want your grandchild to follow God, to follow Jesus, to be to be all that Jesus has for him to do, number one, you've got to get your act together. Because the children are going to do what they see you do. All right. Train up a child in the way she go. Now, y'all all remember this cute little song that we used to sing? Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. 
For the Father up above is looking down with love. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. For the Father up above is looking down with love. Oh, <coughs> Sorry. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down with love. <coughs> oh, be careful. Here it is. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. For the Father up above is looking down with love. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. That little song, that little children's song that we sang a thousand times, in Sunday school, in, in children's church, in bus ministry, all over the world has so many great profound truths. If we would just take that one little song and apply it to our life, this world out here would be a whole lot better place. But see, we've got secret sins. We've got sins that we don't want our kids seeing. We don't want our kids knowing about. Remember what I told you about God, children being God's little snitches? They're always watching. They're always watching. But here's the thing. You know who else is watching? Oh, the Father of above. You see all those little dark sins that you've got that you may be hiding from your kids, that you may hide from this pastor, that you may hide from this church? But the Father of above is looking down in love. Jesus knows every sin. Jesus knows every thought. And we're going to give account of them one day or another. All right. Now, the children. The children. Matthew 22 says, Suffer not the little children unto me. Come unto me. Matthew also says that if you hurt one of these little ones, it would be better for you to have a millstone tied about your neck and cast into the sea. There's more ways of hurting than physical hurt. There's more ways of hurting than physical hurt. Because if you're allowing your children to see what they ought not to see through your eyes. Because your eyes, what you do and what you see, hear, speak, and where you go... They affect your heart. They affect what you do. You can get up here and you may hide it from the preacher all day long. You, you may have the preacher believing that you're the greatest thing since last bread. But Jesus knows. And your kids know. The charge to you today as you raise your children, when you bring your children down here, and tell God that you want, you want God's blessing on your children and go home and do the things that God hates. How's that going to work for you? Now, hold on. Hold on. You see, when we have this blessing, when we have this dedication here in men, you know who else that falls on? My friends, my church family? church family. The church family. Did you hear me? Because children are God's little snitches. They know how Brother Don lives. They know. You may fool everybody in the world, but you ain't going to fool a child. They have no God. So, if I'm up here preaching the word of God, if I'm shouting it, if if I'm crying on that stage, and if I'm walking off, and I'm living like a devil, acting like a devil, walking like a devil, talking like a devil, looking what the devil looks at, what's them kids going to see? I may pull it over on you, but I ain't going to pull it over on him. Church family, when we dedicate these children, they are just as much our responsibility as they are our, their parents. 
because we have to come alongside and lift up the parents. We have to come alongside and guard those children, guard those children's hearts from what we see. You know why? Because it affects our prayer life. If you're going to get down, you can fall down on this, this altar and you can pray and you can snivel and you can whine and you can cry all you want to. But if you get up and you're going to that bar, if you get up and you're putting on that pornography, if you get up and, and do the things you're doing, those kids are seeing you, Jesus is seeing you, and the glory, the Shekinah glory, has left you. Lacey and I, I'm going to throw you under the bus, we were talking about the anointing yesterday. And we're going to do a Bible study about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Something you won't hear in the every, every, every Baptist church. But if I get up here without the anointing on me, I'm just taking the brass and sounding singing. I may make you believe it, but the Father up above, who is looking down at love, he's going to call it to my attention. So in fact, what I'm trying to tell you today is we get ready to dedicate these two young ones. We've got to be ready to step up because it falls on us. We've got to be ready to shoulder the burden. When we bless your children, when we bless your family, when we, when we set aside the church, you've got to step up. You've got to step up your game and we've got to step up your game because what we do as a church directly affects you, directly affects you, it directly affects every one of us. We've got to step up for the Father up above is looking down at us. You hear what I'm saying? The charge is this. We can dedicate these babies all day long. And we should be in the business of dedicating babies. But it's kind of like, some of y'all know what church I came out of. Some of y'all know the things that we did. Get them saved. Get them in the water. And that was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life this morning. I swear, I could have run out of that thing. That was, I was, you have no idea. Get them in the water and throw them under the bus. If we dedicate these babies today, and we, oh, we prayed over them. We, we got them where they want to. We got this family where we want to. And then we just throw them to the wolves. Ephesians 2 tells us that we have a war going on, Miss Penny. What is that war with? The world, the flesh, and the devil. It's a battle every day. The world, the flesh, and the devil. We all know that the world is evil. We all know that the flesh is evil. We certainly all know that the devil's evil. But the Father of above is looking down as well. Well, be careful, little eyes, ears, mouth, and feet. Because there's someone always watching. I can't stress this enough. We can bless these babies all day long, but if we're not willing to step aside, step aside, step ourselves, lift this family up, pray for this family, pray for these families over here, pray for these babies over here. And when I say pray, I'm not talking about God bless this, this family. I'm talking about get down on your face. And lift these names up to God. You see, I'm going to tell you something. This, 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 this ain't going to cost you nothing. Because it's just, it's just God right here. The, one of the greatest sins that you will ever commit is telling someone that you'll pray for them and not pray for them. I'm going to throw you under the bus, Kevin. I mean, he, we ain't done this, but I'm going to give you an example. Brother Kevin comes to me and tells me, Brother Don, I got something I need you to pray about. I got something that's killing me. I got something that, that we need to go to God about. All right, Brother Kevin. And I get in my workstation at 5 o'clock in the morning like I always do. Father, bless Kevin. Lord, I don't know what he's going to No. When you're entrusted with intercessory prayer, like I said, this ain't got nothing to do with the message. 
When you're entrusted with the intercessory prayer, somebody comes to see you, Miss Peggy, and says, this is breaking my heart. I need, I need help. This, I need something done. Fall on your face because they thought enough of you to come to you to intercede the throne of God for them. I can say, that didn't cost you nothing. We're uh, fixing to have a dedication. We're fixing to dedicate baby. But we're fixing to dedicate parents. You've got to step up. You've got to live for those babies. You see, Brother Kevin, you're not raised, and Sister Kelly, you're not raised with those boys. Now you listen to this close and you listen well. You're not raising a boy. You're raising somebody's husband. You're not raising a baby girl. You're raising someone's wife. Brother Kevin, it is your job. It is your job, parents of boys. It is your job to show them what a man does, how to, how to treat a woman. It is your job, women, to teach the girls what they should look for in a man. We've got a, we've got a nation, we've got a, a, a generation of, of women that don't know what it's, like, what it's about to be a man, I mean, be a woman. We have raised up a generation of, I'm going to say it, and hairless and them, a generation of city boys. They have no clue what it takes to be a man, to stand up for their family, to love their family, to die, to be willing to die for their family. But being willing to die for them means you've got to be willing to live for them so you can set them apart and give them all the tools, give them all the skills that they need to grow up to be that man of God, to grow up to be that woman of God, to when it gets to get time to look for a man. You show them what a spiritual woman is supposed to be. You show them what a spiritual man is supposed to be. We have come at a time one out of every, every 2.3 marriages in the United States end in divorce. Is divorce a bad thing? No. Does God hate divorce? Yes, he is. He always will. But it's our fault. Because we have not stood up as the church of God and they say, thus saith the Lord, and teach our men how to be men of God. Teach our girls how to be women of God. Just because we've stepped on it, just because we've made a mess of it, it's time to cut. It's time to draw a line in the sand, just like one of my favorite people, William Barry Travis, did in the Alamo. Who is now among you? Are you going to fight the battle? Are you going to fight the battle for these babies? Are you going to fight the battle for your babies? Are you going to fight the battle for, for your grandkids? Step across the line. If not, go on back. It's time to step up. Our children are at stake. These blessed babies that we're going to dedicate is at stake. Because they are our future. They are our future. They are a blessing from God. And they are lent to you from God. Psalm 22. You see, it's not about you. When you, when you hold that precious baby in your arms, that's a gift from God. And God has entrusted you to raise that baby in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Don't be willing to die for that baby. Don't be willing to live for that baby. And you do that by this. Every thought. The world, the, the world, the flesh, and the devil. We're fighting the world, the flesh, and the devil 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Because if you're not going to stand up for that baby, Brother Kevin, if you're not going to stand up for that girl, Brother Kevin, if you're not going to stand up for that girl, I guarantee you the devil is out there. It ain't about us. 
It's about raising that next generation. Those, the, that generation of Samuels, the one that called down the wrath of God, the one that anointed David as king, the one that's going to do the work of the Lord. You see, most of us, a lot of us here, we're getting on. We're getting on next. We ain't going to be around much longer. We've got to pass the torch, and we need to pass the torch to children that have been brought up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. The charge is this. Don't die for your babies. Live for your babies. What we're going to do here, we're going to have a couple of verses of invitation. I'm going to open the altars, and then I'm going to ask Brother Kevin, Miss Kelly Jo, the babies, to come down here and join us at the front. This is their time. This is about the baby. This is about the family. It's about your legacy. How do you want your children to remember you? Do you want your children to remember you as the, as, as the man who got drunk? Do you want your children to remember you as the man that snuck off and watched pornography? Do you want your children to remember you as the man that says one thing and did something, something else? We're just going to have a couple of verses, and I'm going to ask for y'all to come on down. Y'all all right?